my name is Diane Rhodes. I'm one of the um, internal medicine specialists over at Loomis Basin Equine. Today we're going to be talking about uh, common horse eye problems and how to better evaluate the eye at home um, and so you can sort of know when uh, something is an emergency and when to call. So to start, in order to better talk about the eye in general, um, it's a good idea to have a general sense of some anatomy. So on the slide that we have for you, you can sort of see this is a close-up of a horse's right eye. And uh, it's just important when you're trying to describe where you're seeing a problem um, to know a little bit of the general anatomy. So we'll just go through that really quickly. So first and foremost, um, on the outside, we have the eyelashes, just similar to yours and mine. Um, and they have upper and lower eyelashes. Um, the, if we stick to the left side of the screen, they have the corpora nigra, which are these sort of dilations around the iris, and some horses have very robust versions of these. So the next time you look at your horse, take a look at them because they're definitely a little bit of a funny thing that's sort of unique to the horse eye. Um, also, we have the lateral canthus, uh, and on the opposite side of that, we have the medial canthus. That is just describing sort of the part that's closest to the nose versus the part that's closest to the ear. Um, below that on the left side, we also have the iris. That's the colored part of the eye, so that may be variations of brown or horses that are less pigmented may have blue irises, and those are very similar to yours and mine. And the iris basically is what kind of creates the pupil, which is where the light goes through the eye, gets refracted by the lens, and then goes to the back of the eye. Um, and then on the right hand side of the screen, on the outside at the very top there, you see we have the vibrissae, which are basically their sort of long hairs that are around the eye. Um, the sclera is the white part of the eye, which is similar to yours and mine. And the junction between sort of that clear cornea and the sclera is the limbus. And Tucked underneath the soft tissues and right next to the medial canthus is the third eyelid, which can come up and be important for other diseases that they can get in and around the third eyelid. What's not shown in this picture is the conjunctiva, which is the pink part of the eye, which we'll see in some of the other pictures that typically you don't necessarily see um, if the eye is comfortable and normal, but if there's any swelling or anything, you, it may be visible. So always a good idea to have a basic uh, understanding of anatomy in order to describe what else is going on. So some common eye problems that we see, um, obviously trauma is a big one, um, and that can be blunt trauma to the head, that could be uh, an eyelid laceration, um, so definitely different ways horses can get themselves into trouble for sure. Um, they can also get corneal ulcers. These are often secondary to trauma and that may be self-induced or not. Um, and the big thing that can happen with corneal ulcers, is, which is basically a scratch on the surface of the eye, um, what we mainly worry about is those can get infected and we'll see some, some pictures of infected eyes a little bit later. Um, and then if you're unfortunate to be familiar with recurrent uveitis, that's also uh, called moon blindness, a very common problem in Appaloosa horses, but uh, something that we do see quite commonly. Um, I put habernema or summer sores in there as well, which we sort of see during the uh, late spring and definitely during the summer for horses that are susceptible to those. And those are the part that will involve that third eyelid. Um, th they can definitely get cancer in and around the eye as well, so things to watch for if you get different lumps and bumps. And horses can also get glaucoma um, as well as cataracts, and sometimes those are often secondary to some of these other problems that you're seeing presented on this screen. But what's most important, I think, especially when you're talking about evaluating the eye, is the fact that some of these are um, can be very vision limiting. And that's why it's very important to be able to recognize when and if your horse is having a problem, because we're obviously our main goal is to preserve vision. So to start, the main goal here um, would be to start with your basic examination of the eye. Um, so I like to start 
from afar, looking at the front of the horse. And what you're gonna do is you're sort of gonna look at the horse's head. Is it symmetrical? Um, is the horse holding their head upright? Um, or is there any tilt from side to side? And then specifically too, if you're looking at the eyes, I like to look for symmetry. Are they holding the eyes uh, symmetrically open? And I put little arrows over the eyelashes because that's a very, very nice trick. If you sort of look just at the angle of the eyelashes, you'll be able to see if one is slightly more open than the other, which is actually a, a very subtle change that may happen first when they're just starting to squint. It may be just a little tilt downward of the eyelashes that you'll notice. So something to keep an eye on for sure. While you're looking at the horse this way, the other things that you can notice before you just jump into to looking at the horse is that you can say, hey, are they behaving normally? Are they appearing that they're suddenly blind? Do they seem to be able to navigate their environment? Um, and then little things that you can do while you're looking at the eye this way too, is that you can just sort of wave a little hand in front of the eye and make sure the horse blinks. We call that a menace response. And that's basically, you know, do they detect something menacing coming towards them? In which case the correct response, right, is to blink. So things like that are what you can do when you're starting from afar before you get too hands-on. Remember a lot of these problems that you're looking at or trying to detect may be painful. So start afar uh, because most horses uh, who are comfortable will let you examine their eyes, but remember they may be painful. So basically um, to start with the examination, it helps to have a little bit of a dim room. Um, obviously here at the hospital we have exam rooms, but if you have a barn or a lean-to um, or just even a decent amount of shade, that can be helpful, especially if you're looking at home. It's also nice to have like a little flashlight. Nowadays, a lot of smartphones have flashlights, but you can also use a headlamp or any other sorts of light you may have. And what you can do is sort of look left to right. And in you, this picture, what you can see is that we're sort of able to appreciate the pupil. And you want to sort of say, hey, do these pupils from side to side, do they look symmetrical? You also want to notice, does one side have any more or less tearing? Um, but just before you get started, this is a good way to sort of look for pupil symmetry, but also to set yourself up for the best way to examine the horse if you have the, the best light. So again, any kind of light source can be helpful to start. Um, do remember again though, horses that with, with eye problems are often painful. And so if you flash the light in their eye, they may be inclined to kind of blink or look away. And that's actually a sign that their eye is probably detecting the light. But again, just be careful because they may be painful. So again, um, it's helpful if you do have a headlamp, it frees up your other hand so you can get a kind of, uh, closer look. Um, and then what you basically want to do is sort of start from the outside in. So we've already talked about looking for symmetry. Um, is there any swelling? And then you can use your free hand to sort of try to gently open up the eye um, to get a slightly closer look. So what are some common clinical signs that we see with eye problems? We'll go over these a little uh, individually, and I have pictures and examples of each one. Um, and the reason why it's important to note these is that a lot of eye problems, regardless of what the origin is, will present the same. So whether you have uveitis or a corneal ulcer, they'll be painful, they may have some swelling. So we'll sort of go through a couple of these. So in this picture, we can see the arrows just pointing out. This is a horse that had a, a ulcer, and you can see that the uh, left side, um, uh, of the screen, that right eye on the horse is swollen. Um, it's also squinting and you can see, if you, again, if you look at the eye lashes, they're definitely angled um, more vertically compared to the other side. So again, to get that front view is, is helpful. In this picture, uh, we also show just some evidence of swelling. These are two different origins in terms of problems. The uh, picture on the left of the screen is a horse that obviously got into a little bit of a traumatic injury. So very important to note the degree of swelling. Um, it's also a good time you can try and feel and palpate around the eye to see if you feel any abnormalities there of the bone as well. Um, on the other photograph, that's an infected corneal ulcer. So you can see that the eyelids are a little bit swollen. But in this picture, I have uh, showing you the swollen um, conjunctiva, so that pink tissue, which you can't normally see, but you can see here because it's a little bit more swollen and inflamed. 
This is another uh, corneal ulcer and similar to the previous picture, you can see that there's a lot of uh, ocular discharge. You can see that it looks sort of gooey around that medial canthus. And occasionally when injuries or eye problems first present, the discharge may actually be very, very clear and it just may be tearing more on one side than another. Um, and as things progress or as you get infection that set, uh, is set up, it may become sort of thicker. So things to, to keep in mind. Another common problem that we see is redness. So in the previous picture, you could see there was red forming on the cornea, which were evidence of blood vessels there. This is another eye with uveitis, and you can see that sclera, which is normally white, in this photo is very, very red. So again, evidence of inflammation and um, very consistent with a painful eye. Other things you wanna look for are cloudiness or changes to the color of the surface of the cornea. These are two different examples. The picture that you see on the left-hand side of the screen is a very focal area where something is abnormal. So you wanna keep in mind that sometimes it doesn't have to be occurring across the entire globe. Um, on the right-hand side, this is again, another infected corneal um, abscess, which is again, unfortunately very common, but you can see that more of the eye is cloudy. And then you can see more centrally in the, in the image that there's a more focal area that's a lot wider. And that's actually the site of a, an abscess within the cornea itself. You can also see just under the eyelashes, uh, some redness on the cornea. Those are blood vessels um, that we see that are coming in to try and heal that ulcer. Um, the thing that's important about those when you start to see them, they typically take about three days to uh, show up and then they grow about a millimeter a day. So by using the vessels, you can get a little bit of an idea as to how long the problem has been going on. The other things you want to look for obviously are any abnormal soft tissues. So this is an example of squamous cell carcinoma that's actually um, has grown to cover a good part of the surface of the eye. The eye itself you can see is otherwise pretty comfortable. So remember not every single condition is going to show up with all of the same clinical signs. Um, other little cancers that we can see besides squamous cell carcinoma are definitely sarcoids, not necessarily on the surface of the eye, but definitely involving the eyelids um, and in very close proximity to the eye. So again, for a lot of these lesions, the reason it's important to keep it, uh, keep a close eye on them is that sometimes the first signs can be very subtle. They won't always present very painful, um, but things like cancers, um, they're often a lot easier to deal with when they're small. This one did turn out okay, but still, um, it's a lot easier to deal with when they're small. So the main thing here is like, what can you do um, if you obviously see an eye problem? Um, First and foremost, stay calm. Um, sometimes you wake up and the horse is very swollen, they're painful, and they're often very worked up. And a horse that's acutely made itself blind can be very, very reactive. So first and foremost, stay calm. Um, when possible, especially if you call us, we'll often tell you to sort of try and provide some form of pain relief if the eye appears painful to you. And those painful things that we talked about, right, are looking for squinting, tearing, changes in that eyelash level um, would all be evidence of that. Um, so, you know, oftentimes we'll, we'll recommend some form of pain relief until we can see them. And then the other thing that's a good idea to do is to place a fly mask on. The idea behind this is mostly so they don't continue to traumatize the area. So horses that have uh, conjunctivitis from allergies are prone to rub, in which case they may end up developing corneal abscesses or sorry, ulcers, in which case, whatever you can do to reduce trauma to the area is a good idea. And then obviously the sort of main goal here is to consult with your veterinarian, um, which the main thing is because eyes problems can escalate very, very quickly. And again, our main goal is always to preserve vision. So um, the sooner we act upon a lot of these things, the, the better outcome we're gonna have. And so a lot of times eye problems truly are emergencies and should be dealt with pretty quickly. So uh, lastly, um, I just wanted to go over a little bit how you can uh, try to take a good photograph, which is can be helpful when you're trying to describe what's going on and you don't have the right words or forget all of the terminology we talked about. Um, so providing yourself dim ambient light is usually uh, the best lighting. Um, if you have help to kind of hold the eye open, that can be helpful because a lot of times these guys really, really want to hold them tightly closed. 
And then you want to use uh, just like a, a little light source, kind of just to uh, illuminate the eye, but from slightly more of a distance. And I'll show you an example shortly of what happens when you get too close with that. Um, and it helps because if you're anything like me, you can be a little bit shaky um, to be a little bit further away because with a lot of smartphones these days, the camera is actually really, really good. So we, it's easier to zoom in. So being a little bit further away will allow you to take a, a photograph with less motion. And don't forget, you can take them from various angles. So from the front as well as from the, um, from the side. What I just wanted to show you an example of is if you have too much light in the background, you can sort of see that it, it pops up and obscures. It could obscure a lesion that's hiding right there. Um, and then you can see the light source is too close. Um, so you can barely make out that there's actually a cloudy section on that eye um, that's closer to the medial canthus. So again, that's an eye that's uh, the light source is a little bit too close and we may have even used a flash and that's sort of what obscured the, the lesion there. Um, otherwise, be patient, take lots of photos. You don't have to develop them. So just you have a smartphone, just use it. And again, avoid being too close. Um, and send us those pictures. We're happy to chat with you on the phone. Um, and again, a lot of times we want to see them to make sure that we don't get into to trouble down the road. So um, obviously, if you have any other questions or, or just need a refresher or have an eye problem, don't hesitate to ever give us a call or shoot us an email or send us a, send us a photo. We'd be happy to help.